Welcome to Outboard Motorbike. It's cooling system time today because um, two things have arrived by the miracle of Australia Post. 400 by 380 radiator core. Ridiculous thing for a motorbike, but um, with our water cooled exhaust, I think that's what we'll need. And I hate riding along looking at the temperature gauge, so if it's too much, that's fine. That slips under there really nicely, like a ball one. And the other handy bit of kit, electric water pump, which also fits, it's black like a Mercury outboard motor, and it fits beautifully up there where it'll um, plumb in easily and with it oriented that way around it'll, um, it'll self bleed. So we'll carry on down that road. Our radiator now has a bottom tank tacked in place and for details of how to make a radiator see my um, one of my previous Goggle Build Dart videos, I won't make you go through that again. And that's a nice little one inch mandrel bend which works in really nicely inside the frame as a water outlet to the pump and misses the flywheel cover. So we'll weld that on there and carry on. Well that little pipe takes care of getting the water out of the radiator and now we need to get some in. There's the top tank, sort of a funny shape, but it's to maximise the clearance to the fork over there. And over on the other side The water will come out of the engine down here in front of the gearbox, under the gearbox somewhere. Shoot across. And this little pipe needs to go in there somewhere to get some water into the radiator. Here's our more or less finished radiator. It's got end tanks welded onto the core now and side plates and somewhere for the water to go in. Uh, that's for a temperature sensor fill a neck and down the bottom somewhere for the water to come out. The uh, next thing we need to do is find a way of mounting that to the motorbike. There's our radiator more or less where it sits in the motorbike and to mount it we might take advantage of this little boss that Mr Suzuki put there for us and also this quite nice little um, screw which I removed from an FJ1200 in about 1987 and have kept for the last 35 odd years because I knew it would come in handy for something. So I'll see what we can do with that. Here's our little upper radiator mount. A bit of aluminium with an M6 thread in one end, M8 the other and a little bit of threaded bar screwed in there and a pair of 17mm flats filed on there. And the other end, always good to soft mount radiators, so that's a that's a grommet, a little spacer that goes in there. So a big headed bolt like that. Screws in the end of that thing. And then a little bracket will go in the slot in the grommet and that'll work out nice and soft, and nice and strong. And there it is. Screwed into the frame. Our radiators now got the top mounts in place, um, bottom mounts we'll deal with later. Unfortunately on full lock the steering bottom triple clamp hits the radiator cap so I have to move that which is a nuisance but we can deal with that. So there's a the radiator getting water out to the water pump. Hey presto, uh, just a bit of, uh, another bit of sand bent aluminium pipe. The water pump that I've chosen is the sort of not the smallest one in the range, it's 115 litre a minute rather than 80 um, to try and shove some water through this thing. But it's got a whacking great inch and a half inlet and outlet um, and to deal with that there's an inch and a half bit of pipe but I've just turned up a little machine from solar with a little conical adapter that goes on there, something like that this hides away nicely in there and with a bit of rubber hose on that it'll sit in here like pretty much just like that 
and we'll carry on and send the water to the engine that way. I don't know how much you can see in there, but to get the water into the engine, we're going to come in through the poppet valve, which is under there, which requires uh, taking all this gubbins off, which has to come off sooner or later. So I'll take it off now. Now, two things we've learned here. Our little engine looks a lot nicer without all that wiring hanging off it. And in here we've got our little poppet, poppet valve for letting water out of the engine when it's an outboard motor, when it gets enough pressure up. Controlled by a little servo in this end, some sort of porting type affair. But we're going to take that out because we want to let the water in here rather than out. Well, it turns out, when we remove all this, we can throw um, half of it away and just use that bed, which saves a bit of space because we need to get a 90 degree fitting out of there. So that's handy. Now because we want a nice tight little 90 degree bend, that's one way of doing it, a little mandrel bend. If you want it even, um, even tighter, that's another way of doing it with a donut, not a pastry donut, a metal donut, which is, uh, which is two spinnings which you weld them together, which you weld together and cut up the bit we want. There's our little donut welded together and there's a the little 90 degree bit we want out of it. And now, quarter of a donut welded to a couple of bits of straight alley tube. And with everything back together here, our little plate's now got a 25mm hole in it. And that fits in there quite sneakily like that. So I'll weld it to the plate, and that bit's done. Well, there you go. Give or take a few hose clamps and a little bracket to stop that wobbling around. There's the left hand side of the cooling system done, so water out of the red, up to the water pump, back down to the block over here. Simple. Just a little aside here, this Heath Robertson setup is me checking the back backlash on the gearbox now that we have the right shim in between the two cases, so that pile of stuff is holding the output shaft in place. And this pile of stuff is set up to measure the backlash in between the end of that fixed piece and the little tab poking off the input shaft there. And it measures 0.45 mil, which is bang on bottom limit. So I'm going to put that together for keeps now. Now pretty much the final thing before we put our gearbox together and it stays together. A little dog ring needs to go on there. This needs to be in a position where it'll actually engage. And to hold the dog ring in gear, a little collar goes on the end, so it doesn't jump out of gear. A very small amount of silicon gasket material on there, and we're done. <laughs>